Usher. It was made in France, directed by Jean Epstein, and the story was adapted from Edgar Allan Poe by none other than Louis Buñuel, who was known as the father of surrealist cinema. And he's most famous for a film called Une Chien Andalou, which, or The Andalusian Dog, which when I saw it in... Uh, Art school, a long time ago, it scarred me for life. That scene where the razor blade is going against the eyeball, that, I never got over that. I've never seen it since. But he, that's a very famous film. There was also a lot of evil insects. Um, not my cup of tea. But anyway, he did adapt the story in an extremely powerful way. It's this awesome. kind of a merger of The Fall of the House of Usher with... The Tomb of Lygia. You're going to love this. This is a film of beautiful, opulent gloom. And it's very poetic, very spooky, and has many wonderful, iconic images. It's very emotionally gripping and powerful. It's got an amazing psychological and... Um, deeply felt quality about it. It's called The Fall of the House of Usher. Now this has been made into many, many, many films, but this one is particularly absorbing and powerful. And a lot of it, I think, is the art direction, um, the way that it's filmed. It kind of looks like really good charcoal drawings, a kind of smudgy, foggy, dark and light, you know, and and a kind of fairy tale quality about about it. It stars a, a wonderful man who plays Roderick Usher, Jean de Bucor, uh, Madeline Usher, the, sis, the famous sister, wife. <laughs> it's played by Marguerite Gans, and then a cute little old man called Charles Lamy, and he plays the guest called Alan. Where have we heard this before? <laughs> And it actually, you know, that's kind of a link to Castle of Blood, the Barbara Steele movie I uploaded last time. It has a similar heavy gloom to it. The, it it's, it's so beautiful. And in the story, um, Roderick Usher, of course, you know, he's half mad because he's so inbred and he's the last of his line and he comes from a family where the, where the men have always painted their wife's portrait. And as he's painting his wife's portrait, it's like every brushstroke is stealing her vitality, stealing her life force. And so that she begins to come alive in the painting while her real body is dying. And so there's a kind of vampirism there. A kind of mad vampire artist. Well, the painting is a vampire. There's, there's just this stealing of the real woman to give life to the artificial woman in the painting. And it, even though it's a silent movie, there are text cards, but they're beautifully translated. Watch this. And it's, it's also kind of historically important if you put it in line with Europe between World War I and World War II was an incredibly creative time because you had the German Expressionists, you know, with the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Nosferatu 
And this one, this fall of the house of Usher is kind of a cousin of that in the sense that it's that time. And it also has that fairy tale kind of quality um, where the parts of the sets are real, but then parts of it are very surreal or very expressionistic. And the house is slowly, as, as this drama is playing out, the house is starting to sink into the dank tarn, starting to fall apart. Every Very poetic, very deep, and um, full of symbolism. So please enjoy the fall of the house of Russia. A film by Jean Epstein. The Fall of the House of Usher. Based on themes by Edgar Allan Poe. Cast Marguerite Abel Gans. Jean de Bucourt et Charles Lamy. Cameraman Lucas. Art director Pierre Keffer. sick and worried. My wife Madeline is dying. And then it will be my turn. I beg you, come to our aid. Roderick Usher. Could one of you Drive me to the house of Usher.
his dilapidated mansion, the tyrannical, highly strung Sir Roderick kept his wife Madeline in a state of strange seclusion. Not for all the gold in the world will I drive my horse one step further. The atmosphere of insufferable gloom surrounding the house of Asha seemed supernatural. The disease of Lady Madeline 
had long baffled the skill of a physician. By some quirk of heredity, every male descendant of the Usher family devoted himself passionately to painting his wife's portraits. It is there that she lives. My dear Roderick. Weary and 
begs you to excuse our absence from the table. Once again possessed by a strange and fervid desire to paint, Roderick can think only of being alone with Madeline, his sole mother. How is he to rid himself of his intrusive friend? The Usher family tree was as tormented as an old oak and threatened Roderick, the last of the line, with degeneracy. I am by your solicitude, my only friend. But look to your own health, too. You would do well to go for a stroll before retiring.
Roderick's brush was like a magic wand. With its every stroke, the portrait came more and more to life. But Madeline grew even paler. She seemed to give the painting the strength that was ebbing from her body. Thank you.
this is indeed life itself. Driven by his fascination with mystery, Roderick had long poured over the theories of magnetism. Could be that she is not dead. shall bury her on this very spot.
bid the coffin to be nailed down. Do you hear me?
had been an oppressive silence since Madeline's entombment. The hours and days dragged on and on with harrowing monotony. almost at breaking point, Roderick seemed to await some sign. The slightest sound exasperated him.
Roderick dared not repeat the wild conviction that was paralyzing him. Madly. It looked thundery and alive with electricity. Double silence. One is the silence of the body. Do not fear it. by some implacable destiny, you should encounter his nameless ghost that haunts desolate regions where no human foot has trod. Commend yourself to God.
Roderick, you must not be all this. Come, I will read to you and you will listen. Ethelred uplifted his mace outright and with blows made quickly room in the plankings of the door for his gauntleted hand. And now, pulling therewith sturdily, he so cracked and ripped. And Ethelred uplifted his mace and struck upon the head of the dragon which fell before him and gave up his pesty breath with a shriek so hurried and harsh and so piercing Now the champion approached valorously over the silver pavement of the castle to where the shield was upon the wall, which in fact tarried not for his full coming, but fell down at his feet with a mighty great and terrible
and have heard it long, long, long since the first day. living in the tongue.